plow Power Rangers. Let me start that again. Power Rangers playback. <laughs> Hi, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in early. David was so, so sweet in coming in early. And I see all of these super chats that are coming in right now. Yeah. So we're going to start off by saying... We are doing um, our live today from 2.30 to 3.30 only. So if you want your Super Chat to be um, read, then you need to get it in by 3.15. Yes. I would even say by 3.10. Um, anything after that, we may not be able to get to you. Okay? Yay! So should we bring in the man? The man. The OG. The OG. The original Blue Ranger. Blue Ranger, who you actually well, said that you I, had... I did have a little crush. A crush. I did. A little crush. When I watched the show from Australia, before I came on, I <laughs> was like, look at him with his little glasses <laughs> and his, his little overalls. I just thought he was so cute. <laughs> and he has just been so lovely. And I remember getting on, um, first coming on the show, he was very welcoming and just... Such a delightful person. I'm, yes. I'm very, we're very blessed to have him on our show. And without further ado, David, David Yost! Yost! Yay! Yay! Thank you so much for being here, a friend. Well, um, thank you for having me on, and thank you for lying to everybody out there about how, <laughs> nice, how nice I am. You, oh, stop! No, 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 no. <laughs> well, you, maybe a little bit. No. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, you've been, you've been very, very kind, and even just being on our show and being accommodating. I mean, I. I called David earlier today because we had a, um, what can I say, scheduling a scheduling conflict. conflict and asked him if he would come in early and he was just so accommodating by saying absolutely and, and not everybody is like that. So I'm just like so grateful. You don't understand. Thank you so much. <laughs> so what have welcome. you been up to, Mr. D? Well, you know, uh, just kind of been uh, hanging out for a year, it seems like. Yeah. Uh, it went by fast. For me, anyways, it's kind of crazy, uh, and I try to look back and go, well, what have I really accomplished in a year? But uh, not not a lot, but really helping my family a lot. So uh, yeah. right now, I'm still in the midst of my father sold his home in Northern California, and he's moving to Arizona. So I've been like helping him find a house and all that kind of stuff. So I've been Aww. sort of traveling in those locations, uh, helping my dad find a house, which we found one. So next week I'll be there helping him move into his house. So wow. uh, it's- Wow, good. It's what part of Northern California, California David? Cause you know I'm well, from Northern lived, California as well. Well, you're Stockton, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, but my dad lived in Sonoma. Okay. Uh, so in the wine country and my mom is in Sacramento. I shouldn't be saying all <laughs> where, well, where my family lives. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna be searching for him, no, no. They, they, <laughs> They won't find him. They won't find him. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that yeah. um, he found a home. Are the, are the pr home prices good now with the whole COVID? Are they better or worse? COVID has been like insane real estate wise. Uh, I don't know if you guys have even been following the market here in California, but everywhere it seems like in the United States, people are buying. It's like insane. And the prices are just going skyrocket. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. where my dad bought in Arizona... Like when we first started looking five months ago, I mean, the prices have jumped $200,000. Wow. Like, doesn't even make sense, you know? Wow. And there's like, no, there's no, uh, there's nothing to justify it really. And I just, I keep thinking, you know, most of us are out of work or we're not really working. Yeah. But I guess the, the theory is, is that uh, because so many people are working from home now, they can live wherever. They don't have That's to be right. locked See? into a certain city. And so people are right. fleeing California uh, yes. and uh, moving all over the place, like Idaho, Arizona, Colorado, yes. Texas, Texas. You know. To places where the taxes aren't as high. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Exactly. It's this a huge true. difference. Um, my, my friend is moving to um, Virginia and she's selling her home here and she lives in a very modest house. It's it's worth like 1.8 million. It's very small. Wow. And she's she can buy like a 4,000 square foot house in Virginia for 700,000. So she's like, hmm, maybe I'll buy five <laughs> houses. <laughs> so, exactly. Crazy, yeah. No, I've right? been looking, me personally, I've been looking at houses out by where you guys live. Yeah. And you know, it's like uh, 1.2 to 1.5 million dollars and it's like 1,300 square feet and it's a fixer. Right. Like, yes, come on. Yeah, it's crazy. I agree. Yeah, it is really crazy. crazy. 
really crazy. And how's, so how is your business? You have affirmative clothing. Are you still doing your clothing line? I, uh, I do from a distance, yes. uh, but yes, it's still up and running. It's, uh, it's been five years. It's been kind wow. of crazy. Uh, it's been so successful over the past yes. five years. Yes. So, uh, you know, I always get excited when, uh, often Jason David Frank, but a lot of other uh, Power Ranger actors from different seasons, when they're at shows, they'll take pictures of people wearing affirmative clothing company and text it to me and or tag me on social media. So that's always like, you know, such an honor. Yeah. Uh, so many people wear uh, affirmative clothing company uh, at shows, uh, you know, and sh support their Ranger love. Uh, it's you know. also a and really nice message. Like I love, I love the message, the affirmative message, like a, a beyond it being a Billy co a quote, it's also a really nice uh, message to put out there. So Embrace who you are, believe in who you are, affirm who you are. Exactly. That's our message. I love it. I love that. Yeah. Awesome. Good. Well, should we start getting yes. into some of these questions? Yes. yes. Let's I guess. see. Now, what? what do you guys call what do you guys call questions? You were you calling them chat? Super <laughs> chat. Super chat. Super That's chat. right. Okay, so we're super now, chatting. We're we, super we, chatting. We've given guys. We've given David the lowdown on our dance. So he's. Let's see how he goes. If he's gonna <laughs> work it. Woo! Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I'm into it. I'll do my best. <laughs> I can. We need. Um, we need some music. Too high. Okay, so our first question is from Gary Graham. Uh, he says, hey, David, you really inspire me. What's your standout moment from being on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Love, Gary, the we, Blue Ranger of Glasgow. We didn't do our super chat. Oh, super, super chat! chat! Raise, Raise him up high! <laughs> I, thought, I, I thought I was kind of thinking we already did it because we were showing him. I, okay, I get you. Got it. Okay, so what's your standout moment from being on Mighty Morphin Power Rangers? Well, I mean, obviously for me, it's just there's so many. Uh, because it's it was such a crazy, wonderful uh, experience from the get go. Uh, I mean, just the first standout moment for me was just uh, the whole audition process and uh, going to film the original pilot. Uh, you know, as a, a young actor moving to Los Angeles and um, wanting to be a working actor, I was working in a hotel as a room service waiter working the graveyard shift. So I would work from like 11 to eight in the morning. And then I would spend my days trying to get auditions and mailing my photo out, dropping my photo off uh, at casting offices. So, uh, you know, just going through that whole audition process, I had eight auditions. Uh, everybody, what? I don't know. If it's, yeah, I don't know if it's cause we're old, uh, not you guys, <laughs> but the, <laughs> the original cast. <laughs> But I, I listen. I listen to my original castmates tell their stories, and like uh, I think Amy Jo or Walter was like, "Oh yeah, it was just a two week process," and I was like, "It was two months for me. I don't know where they were, where yeah. it was only two weeks." But uh, anyways, it was like I had I had eight auditions, and uh, long story short, as they say, uh, I, you know, just getting that phone call saying, "Hey, you secured the role of Billy," was very exciting, and uh, you know that's you have all these things going on in your head and then actually showing up to set and uh, filming the very first day of the original pilot was so magical and I'll never forget it just because, you know, I pulled into the parking lot and they're like, your trailer's over here. And I was like, my trailer, wow. <laughs> but I had to share, I had to share, I had to share the trailer, this little, <laughs> closet, this little closet with Walter and Austin. So oh my God. In the trailer. And Savant then uh, they're like, yeah, they're like, you have to go to makeup and then we're going to uh, do a rehearsal. So they took us to set and we did the very first rehearsal walkthrough kind of thing. And then we went back and got wardrobe and then we were called back to set to film. So all that uh, was really exciting. And the, the hours on the original pilot were like 15 hour days for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, if not, I, I know we had one that was close to 18 hours. I think wow. that was our final day uh, filming in the command center. Uh, so, but it was, none of us care. I didn't care. I can only speak for myself because I was living my dream and mm -hmm. it was so exciting and, uh, you know, just all that. So that's one of my, my big moments, but I mean, just the whole experience on some level, uh, was very, uh, exciting and gratifying. I mean, I did 200 episodes, wow. uh, so it's, it's, uh, pretty, pretty intense all the way around. Did you, um, did you, your cast get together before you showed up on set? Did you, cause you guys were all through going through the process together. So you knew which cast was, was already 
had been had got the roles. So did you guys have a chance to meet before you were on set? Oh, uh, sure. I mean, uh, the way that it went with the original auditions, they they narrowed it down to three casts. So and then they took three casts to network. And uh, the network obviously had the final say of who it was going to be. Um, but I was in cast A and then there was a cast B. They were much taller, kind of looked a little older. And then there was a cast C. They were a little bit more, um, I don't want to insult anybody, but like uh, maybe looked a little bit more eccentric. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, don't, I don't know how to describe them. But, every, you know, they were just, everybody was different. Uh, and so, you know, even being in cast A, B and C, at the end of the day, the network could say, you know, well, we we don't like Billy from cast A. So we want to bring in Billy from mm -hmm. cast C and put him with those people. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's always a possibility. Thank thankfully, I don't know. Here we go. That didn't happen. <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, but I think what what solidified cast A is that we I think we're the only cast that really took the time to spend with each other. Mm -hmm. So uh, we would have our auditions and then we would go to Bob's Big Boy in Burbank and uh, we would sit in the very back booth and we would run lines together and we would hang out together and we would, um, you know, we really became friends. And so like when we went in to audition, uh, we just had amazing chemistry together. And uh, even after moving into the pilot, like I lived in an apartment, I had no furniture, I slept on the floor, uh, my TV sat on a box, uh, but I had everybody come over and everybody spent the night. Oh, that's so <laughs> at cool. The party at my apartment and all that kind of stuff. So we definitely hung out and, uh, you know, we, we have such a, I don't know, for me anyways, like a unique bonding experience, just going from filming this pilot that really didn't make any sense to anybody other than a couple people. <laughs> and, uh, and then, you know, starting to film the first season and we filmed almost the entire first season before it even aired. Uh, and then once it aired, it went to number one and then riding that wave of fame yeah. together, you know, yeah. we just had this really uh, surreal experience. So, yeah. uh, you know, I'm so grateful for it. So yeah. Walter had spoke I don't know if that really that. answered your question. Yeah, Say Walter again. had spoke about that um, in an episode. He, we, he, he spoke about his favorite episode, Itsy Bitsy Spider. And we asked him about the audition process and he talked about the same thing that you just said, that when you guys were auditioning, you guys went out to lunch, got to know each other. And that real chemistry comes into the room. Yes when you do that. And we were we yep. kind of elaborated a little bit on that with just auditioning, period. Especially when you're paired with someone, you need to go in and have that chemistry. So that's really, really awesome. And we, we only just recently watched, we watched your very first episode and we watched um, Walter's favorite episode. And it was, it was really interesting because there was amazing chemistry with that cast. And the stories were really good and the characters were very well developed. And as the seasons went on, I feel like they lost that a lot, so. That's why yeah. the, your cast is so popular, I think, you know? Yeah. yeah there's, okay. certainly, uh, there's certainly like a, a charm. Like I went mm -hmm. back and I rewatched everything and there certainly was some kind of a charm about uh, the first season. And uh, then we did 20 episodes right after filming the 40 episodes, which is kind of season two, but I guess they still counted as season one. Uh, and then a certain executive producer uh, stepped in and I think he sort of tanked the show, mm -hmm. uh, in my opinion. Uh, and so you, you started seeing everybody more glammed up and uh, right. it kind of all that charm kind of went away. And I, I think that sort of started ruining uh, the show. What season did, did Tommy come in? What, when did he was he in season one? He was in season one, but he came in around episode. I want to say 12, but it might not have been till uh, uh, episode 20. And then he was sort of back and forth within the season. Uh, so, okay. but yeah, definitely there from, for me anyways, from what I remember, he was there from the get go, not in terms of being on screen, but we, we had to rehearse, uh, like for the whole month of January before we started filming. And so he had been cast, uh, already. And, um, so he would come in and he would help, uh, train me and Amy Jo in martial arts and sort of like, wow. you know, I always thought he was the goofiest thing I'd ever seen. Like he had curly <laughs> hair and uh, he was so, funny. as you guys know, he's very funny. And, uh, but I just always thought he was so goofy. Uh, I didn't realize people would think he was so sexy. I didn't, I, was just like, <laughs> I didn't. The truth, the truth comes out. <laughs> I was like, why does everybody think he's so 
good looking. And he's just like, <laughs> he's such a goofy person. <laughs> but whatever. He is a goofball. That is yeah. true. Okay. Um, yeah. Next question is from Big Licky Studios. Super Chad, raise him up high. <laughs> Hey, hello, David. It's been nearly seven years since me and my wife, Kirsty, saw you, uh, LFCC. How are you? Question. On the episode, Life's a Mas uh, Masquerade, does this line... It's time for a mole molecular transmutation. He said, does this, line, does this line mean it's morphin' time? It's time for a molecular transformation. Say that again. <laughs> It's, it's time for a molecular <laughs> transformation. Transmutation. Yes, that's that. That is how Billy says in that episode. That was how Billy said it's morphin time. Oh. So it's time for molecular transmutation. So, oh. uh, as as Billy, uh, I would often sit in my dressing room and go through the dictionary yes. and practice the lines and try to figure out what the heck Billy was saying. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so, you had some yes. tongue twisters, didn't yes, you? Yes, but I, I never, I didn't know that. It's time for a molecular transmutation. transmutation. Okay. Woo. There you go. Okay. You, get, you get a whole new thing to go. Yeah, to say awesome. I'm learning it. Thank God I didn't have to say that. I would have never, never been able to take that. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely say Power Rangers playback. All right. Um, Ty Sue. Ty Sue is just giving a shout out to you. Um, Super Chad, raise them up high. All right, um, Christopher Wadden Holmes. Holmes. Hi, Blue Ranger. Were you, Kat, and Tanya happy with the powers Zordon gave you, or would you like to have had the abilities as well, for like flying, for example? Yeah. Wait. He's, he's saying, asking you guys the question, and right? You, he's asking you, you as and well. us, but you go first. I didn't have any powers in Zio. Oh, does he just mean in general? I think just in, just general, in general from Zordon, Zordon, the powers you got from Zordon. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I wasn't too wild about the unicorn. Uh, he, you know, <laughs> what? The unicorn, what was the unicorn? You didn't know that either. No. <laughs> uh, at, some, at some point, we uh, combine our powers with other, uh, whatever they're called. Uh, Zord <laughs> anyways, I had unicorn Thunderzord power, uh, and oh. so I, <laughs> I, I was the Triceratops, the Triceratops, and then the wolf and the the unicorn as well. So, oh, um, wow. hmm. didn't know that. Choice. Yeah, well, it, it was. It, it could have been very tell, telling. Uh, <laughs> little did they know. <laughs> little did they. <laughs> the mag you're our magical but, unicorn. <laughs> yes, in general, I was I was of course very happy with uh, my powers that Zordon gave me. I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I was happy. You actually gave me your power, so <laughs> you pa thank you, David. <laughs> You're very welcome. So I was quite happy just to be on the show and have power, so yay. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually didn't think about it. <laughs> I just went and went on my job. <laughs> and there you have there it. There you go. <laughs> uh, okay. Ty Sue again. Oh. Go ahead. Super chat. Raise them up high. Okay, right. Taisu, I am your biggest <laughs> fan. What Ooh. is your favorite moment of Power Rangers, Mighty Morphin, or Zeo? Uh, what is my favorite moment? Well, I mean, again, there's, there's, there was so much in the first season. There was just, for me, it was just so much fun uh, just getting to go to work every day and getting to be a working actor. This is something that I dreamt about since I was seven years old. So that was uh, awesome. And I, I really didn't mind working 12 to 15 hour days. Of course, there were some days that I was like, ugh. Uh, but I never wanted to miss a day of work. I missed one day. I got uh, food poisoning uh, from the catering truck. Uh -huh. uh, it was fish. <laughs> so, after that, after yes. that day, uh, you know, I showed up to work and I looked, I looked really gross. And our producer Jonathan uh, was like, "Yeah, you need to go home." And I was like, "No, I'll be, I'm gonna be fine. I'm gonna be fine." He's like, go, he's like, "Go home." So they sent me home, and I was really bummed. But uh, I never ate off the catering truck after that day again, uh, and I still have an aversion to catering trucks because of that. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, that was probably my MMPR, not favorite moment. I know yes for my favorite moment, but I, I went there. And then with Zio, uh, I there was I just really enjoyed getting to be Billy and Zio because uh, Billy, um, for me, 
uh, just became more elevated in some ways, not as, as a character, but as, well, as a character, but not on screen. But, uh, you know, he sort of was becoming Zordon Jr. and uh, really getting to work in the command center. And we had a new command center and um, it was a lot more high tech. It was really cool to work on, I think, that set. Um, so I don't know. I just, I had a pretty good time in Zio. Oh, good. Yes. Excellent. Awesome. Excellent. Next question is from Benjamin Brown Keeley. Super chat. Raise them up high. My question is, would you like to have had any more extra roles besides your regular character? Like when you were m the mad doctor in Zio Halloween episode, <laughs> you made science fun. <laughs> ah. Uh, what would I have liked to have done more? I'm, I'm a little confused. I'm like um, done yeah. more. Uh, would you like to departure have extra Billy? roles besides your regular character? Like so, oh, so like different um, versions. Like you were the mad scientist in Zio, or we dressed up in different characters. characters. Yeah, mm -hmm. those are always fun episodes to do. Uh, and kind of scary sometimes, uh, you know, as an actor, you're just supposed to let go and become whatever you're told to become there. And But sometimes I, I found that difficult. But yeah, I mean, uh, in in uh, the first season, uh, we had an episode called um, Switching Places, where Billy and Kimberly switch personalities uh, because of a, a device that Billy made that went wrong. And so I got to be Kimberly. Uh, oh, so that was a lot. Fun. And, uh, <laughs> you guys must have had a blast with that. <laughs> we did. That was, like, that was like one of the first episodes written. And so when we were rehearsing in January, as I was saying, that was like one of the episodes uh, that we were able to rehearse a ton on. So we, we had a lot of fun doing that. And then Billy and Kimberly also, there's one called Power Ranger Punks. One of my most favorite episodes, Billy and Kimberly became kind of the bullies of the school oh. and uh, kind of beat up Bulk and Skull instead of Bulk and Skull beating us up kind of thing. Oh, that's funny. So that was... You know, those are always fun episodes to do, I think. Uh, I played Sherlock Holmes as well in a different um, Halloween episode. But I do remember playing the mad scientist. And uh, I'm calling you Tanya, but Nakia, <laughs> Nakia was in the uh, in the scene with me yeah. in the lab. Nakia yeah. was so awesome. Uh, I, can, I remember filming that. And I just remember kind of like stepping back like this to Nakia <laughs> because she was like, she was like so good. She was so committed. She I was, was like, in wow. character. <laughs> it was. She was there, and I loved it. So, uh, I feel like people always, around Halloween, I always get to see clips of that, and yeah. uh, it's just always funny to to see to see those things. Yeah. Did you sing in that? Do you remember singing in that episode? I don't think you sang. No, but... not in that Not in that episode. I just, you know, my eyes. I remember oh, yeah. doing my eyes, and then, oh really? my gosh, I was really into character, that one. But no, not that episode. That episode, I didn't sing. There was there an episode where... Yeah. She every line, or Jay, maybe it was only Tommy had to sing. No, every... it was, it was J Jason and I. We it was um, oh, you too. another yeah. song and dance where we sang opera, yeah. <laughs> and they annoyed us. Remember, they was couldn't shut up. <laughs> I was like, thank God, because <laughs> if I had to have done that, I, it would have been a horrible episode. People <laughs> well, would have want to turned the TV I, off. I don't know if you remember or not, but Jay did not want to sing. He was petrified. He was terrified, yeah. Yes, he was just like, I, no, I don't want, and I was like, it doesn't matter how it comes out, just sing, and then we couldn't shut him up. He just yeah. kept going, we're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we awesome. got a lot coming okay, in. Okay, Kenny Shibata has two questions, so we'll do both of these questions in one. Okay, well, super chat. Let's just start. Oh, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I was going to say, what an amazing last name. Shibata. Shibata. Mm -hmm. Yes. I like yes. that. Now you can do your super chat. Okay. But, uh, what is it called? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Super chat. Raise my pie. Raise uh, my pie. That's what it is. Yes. <laughs> I like to say thank you, Billy, for being a ray of hope for me to show that nerds, geeks can be cool and be part of a team. Continue mm. that. And Billy had popular friends and get to have a beautiful girlfriend. Today I still have Aww. Aww. Zero friends and I'm alone, but Billy still gives me hope, so thank you. Where are your friends, Kenny? Kenny. Where are your friends? He's our mem one of our members. Yes, and we we have, uh, I consider our Power Rangers playback family. We have a Discord and everything. And Kenny, I'm not sure if you're in the Discord. We've talked about that before. Please get in the Discord because you should never feel like that. No. But he wanted to say thank you to you. Well, well, I appreciate that, Kenny. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, you know, and I... I 
you know, uh, take everything that you're saying to heart because it really does mean a lot to me. And I think, uh, you know, having representation, as we say a lot these days, of uh, characters or actors on screen is so important. And, you know, I really love that the character Billy really spoke to a lot of kids that consider themselves nerds or were bullied or picked on. Uh, you know, it's such an honor for me to get to play a character like that. And, um, and to know that my character, uh, that Billy gave people hope. Uh, and yes, Billy uh, was nerdy and uh, people couldn't really understand him. Uh, but he had friends and he was willing to get out and try things. He started off not being a good martial artist and, uh, you know, uh, with some self-confidence that he slowly developed, he started taking martial arts and learned to develop that. So, you know, Kenny, if there's things that you might be a little hesitant about doing, uh, you know, I, I just always encourage people to do something physical, whether it be martial arts, just go out and walk, uh, run, uh, join a gym and lift weights and you might start meeting other people doing doing things like that there's always opportunity uh yeah. to meet people and i know that it's it feels scary sometimes but sometimes you have to take the initiative uh and, and do it so just you know believe in yourself everything good you put advice. your mind to you can do good advice i love Dave. that david thank that's you. really true thank you we love you kenny um next question is from ben hamilton <laughs> Super chat, raise them up high. Sup, ladies. <laughs> Sup. Sup. <laughs> Props Sup. to the man who portrayed a genius who paved the way for many genius rangers to come. Our Triceratops, our Wolf, our Billy. Aww. Aww. Well, that's that was very kind of you. Thank you. <laughs> so sweet. Uh, I will. I will say, like, uh, I'm always shocked uh, at Comic Cons, or even I'm sure as you guys get them too. Every day, I'm getting messages on social media, but. The amount of people that say, hey, I became a doctor because of you, uh, I'm a scientist because of you, I'm in IT because of you, I became a paleontologist, that's one of my favorites, wow. because of you. Uh, and, just, you know, I joined the Army, I became, became a police officer because of you. Uh, mm. You know, those are all very, um, th it's very rewarding. And, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I'm humbled by it. So I just, I just love uh, that, again, that people could look at our characters and uh, find hope in them or uh, or seeing if they can do it, I can do it kind of thing. Or I want to be a hero. Obviously, I know that superheroes don't exist, but how can I really be a hero in, in real life? And that's why people join the army or um, become police officers or paramedics, all that kind of stuff. So it's yeah. pretty, pretty awesome to experience. Yeah, absolutely. I love that people have become doctors and scientists from your character because they definitely don't come to Tanya and say, I became a doctor because of you. But it's so funny That's to hear. Yeah, because we hear other things. I joined martial arts. I, I loved seeing someone that looked like me on television, but I've never heard. Well, obviously, because my character wasn't like that, but that is... That's amazing. This is the first time I've ever heard something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's really, really awesome. cool. Really cool. Yeah. You just don't you know, realize I, the impact you're making. Like, I think you were so, like you were saying, you're so grateful to have a job and be a working actor and everything. And and because you filmed so many episodes before you even had the chance to know what it was doing, and then all of a sudden, the the love and and the reception that you received, it's really overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. It is. And, uh, you know, even in the success of the show, I mean, obviously, I don't think that any of us really understood that we were shaping people's lives. Right. Uh, and that, that's the mind blowing thing for me. That's why right. it's always so crazy to hear these stories that we we were somehow a moral compass uh, for kids and, uh, you know, just kind of were steering them in ways that I could never in a million years have predicted. And, you know, I always feel bad because I'm I'm a very average uh, student. <laughs> I did not do well in school. Uh, I'm not, you know, people can say, oh, you're smart, but I'm not smart. Uh, I really have to work at school. And so when people tell me they became a doctor or a scientist or something, I'm like, I feel a little guilty because, you know, I, <laughs> no, I could never, I was portraying, but I, I could never understand half of what they do. It's just, uh, I, I'm, I'm uh, always in awe of it. So I think mm -hmm. that's so cool. That means yeah. you were an extraordinary actor. You did your job well. <laughs> well, thank you. Yes, true. All right. All right. Next is from Nate Red Buick. 
Oh, I missed that Super one. Super chat. Raise them up high. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, she left me hanging. I did. Help me out, Dan. <laughs> Help me out. I missed it on here. I got my cups. Thank you. Super chat. <laughs> Raise them up high. Super chat. He's got his Starbucks. Right. He's ready. Oh All right. God, Why it didn't come on? I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm double dipping. Oh, you're double over. dipping. Oh, wow. <laughs> Extra caffeine. Um, Nate says, three of my favorites. Um, question for David. What was harder, competing and training as a gymnast or the daily grind of Power Rangers? Uh, again, I didn't miss the daily grind of Power The only time I, I did not enjoy the daily grind of Power Rangers is when I was in Australia filming the movie. And that was simply because uh, we the movie ran over time. We were supposed to film it in three months. It ended up taking close to six months. And because because of that, the delay, uh, we had to start filming the television series on top of filming the movie at the same oh. time, as well as doing your ADR sessions uh, wow. for the television show for episodes that were already shot. So there was a period where we worked 21 days straight Oof. with no time off, uh, and that that would be that was the hardest grind ever. And yeah. uh, that part I did not enjoy. But in general, I, I never again never wanted to miss a day of work. Uh, and so training as a gymnast, um, I mean, it was difficult because there were certain apparatus that I was good at and certain things that I wasn't. So, you know, male gymnasts have, I don't know, I can't remember, six or seven, uh, the vault, the floor, the high bar, the pommel horse, the rings, I'm missing one, but anyways, I was not good at pommel horse. And so, you know, every time we had to do that, practice that, I would, dread that and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I really wish I would have worked harder as a gymnast, I think, in some ways, because I really enjoyed competing, and I, I think I really had a good shot at going farther than I allowed myself to go. Um, did you, but I got did mixed you do it in college, um, or did you not <coughs> go that, take it that far? Uh, not really that far, mm -hmm. kind of, but not, not my entire college life, no. Okay. Yeah, you're, very, you're a very good gymnast. So is Amy Jo. Amazing, yeah. actually. I remember watching her on the the um, balance beam. Thank balance you. Beam. Thank you. You can tell I'm not a gymnast. Um, and she was doing back tucks on the on the beam, yeah. and I was like, oh, I, I was know. so the panicked. balance beam makes me oh. so nervous. Oh my gosh, uh, it's so scary. And she made she was like is. a little feather flying around, like yeah. she made it look so easy. Yeah. I you know, I don't know how women do that that the beam and I can remember you know training in my gym when I was a kid and you know the girls were training there too and I would never want to do the balance beam and oh. they would stand on it and do back tucks and then <laughs> land in some kind of a split on it and I was yes. like how do you do heck? that without injuring yourself yes. uh, and, uh, but they I can remember they used to make the guys uh, they used to have beams that were I guess just training beams that are just basically on the floor so they're only up like maybe six inches and we would have to stand there and do back tucks on them. Wow. And if we fell off, no big deal. We're not going to hurt ourselves per se because it's only six inches off the ground. But I, I stand in awe of women that, uh, that so can do that. The one that I forgot, strength. the one that I forgot that was for guys was the parallel bars. So oh, um, they're hard. Yeah. That's really hard. Yeah. yeah. God bless you. God Not bless you. All right, next yep. question is David okay. Matchin, one of our members. Super chat, raise my pie. <laughs> Hello to the three of the biggest. I know David. Oh, do you know him? Oh, he met well, you. I mean, he met you in um, Ohio, I think he said. I think I've, I've met him a couple. I know I've met him, and then, like, I think the last, I think I did some cameo calls, and maybe he was on that as well. I I, I know he and I have spoke. But he loves you. Me? Yeah. He does hey, love David. you. <laughs> David to David. David. Hello to the three uh, three of the biggest rays of sunshine in my life, Kat, Nakia, and David. Hi, David. I um, hi, David. Remember me from the GalaxyCon live oh, chat. Yeah. I just wanted oh, to say hello to my favorite Blue Ranger of all times. Aww. Well, very nice of you, David. Thank you. I'm saying hi back to you. He was so excited that he actually messaged us to tell us that he was he that he'd met you, and he was very overwhelmed. So. <laughs> So, yeah, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like I told him he should get into voiceover work. Yes, I'm you not sure. did. Yes, you did. did I? Okay. Yes, you did. He does yes, have did. a great voice. Yeah. Yes, you did. Because he was talking to us about that. That's right. Hey, Brandon Lister, super Stop. chat. Raise him up high. Good afternoon, ladies. Good afternoon, David. I have two questions. 
did anything, uh, did you add anything of yourself to Billy? And number two is what did you learn about yourself while acting Billy? Wow, what a great question. That's yeah. kind of deep. Yeah. <laughs> did I, I mean, obviously I think as an actor, whenever you play a character, you're drawing on something from inside yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, but I will say like, uh, you know, the only thing that I can really say that I brought was that I could understand how Billy had friends, but he was kind of a loner at the same time. And so I think that was like sort of uh, the only comparison between me and Billy, because again, Billy is super genius, me not so much. Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I learned so much from the character of Billy. Uh, certainly Billy made me a smarter person simply because, like I was saying earlier, I had to sit in my dressing room with a dictionary and look up words because I was like, what in the heck is this guy talking about? <laughs> and where are these writers even coming up with that? Right. Uh, one of my favorite lines uh, from Power Rangers, and I said it in the original non-airing pilot, and I can't remember if it made it to the pilot that aired, but um, was a fully sentient multifunctional automaton. How prodigious. And I was like, wow. what? What <laughs> is that? I didn't even just say it, and I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what that means. So I was like, uh, a sentient, what the heck is sentient? Uh, multifunctional, kind of understood yeah. automaton. What the heck is an automaton? An automaton? Yeah. A robot. A robot, uh, okay. Yeah. Fully sentient, multifunctional automaton. How prodigious. And I was like, prodigious, I kind of get it, but I had to look it up anyway. So, <laughs> uh, you know, but... Um, so it was always a learning, uh, a learning thing for me with Billy. And he certainly, I became such a smarter person just because I had a bigger vocabulary. And I, I kind of enjoyed that as I would go out in the world because then I would start using big words and people would be like, they didn't know what I was <laughs> You like Transmutation. That. I just, I sounded very intellectual, very oh, yes. uh, studious, a student. Yes. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Astute. Astute, um, yes. So I just wanted to tell the fans, we are not going to take any more Super Chats at this time because we will be ending oh. at 3.30 and we still have a lot, quite a bit to get through. So I don't want you to pay for Super Chat and then we're not able to get to your questions. So we're going to stop the Super Chats at this point and just try to make it through the ones that we have. So thank you so much. We knew that David was going to be a, a very popular man. Popular popular person on here. Yes. Next one is Matt Thornton. Super chat. Raise him up high. Hi, David. You were my first Comic-Con guest I ever met and one of my first heroes. One of my favorite MMPR episodes is when Billy and Kimberly switch bodies, which is, what was it like to play Kimberly? <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Give us uh, a sample. <laughs> I can't. I, I wish I could remember some of the stuff that I was saying as Kimberly, but uh, you know, again, that was one of the episodes that we. Uh, it was one of the very first written episodes, and we did get to work on it quite a bit. So it was, it was fun and interesting. Uh, I guess I kind of liked it because <laughs> I don't know. This sounds kind of egotistical, but I or maybe, <laughs> but um, I just remember the crew coming up certain members of the crew coming up to me afterwards going, gosh, you're a really good actor. And I was like, thanks. <laughs> I'll take that. <laughs> Sold. Yeah. I love that. All uh, right. Thomas, Thomas Powell, Powell, one of our channel members. <laughs> Super chat. Raise him up high. Hi, David, Kat, and Nakia. Hello. Especially David. Question. What other color ranger would you like to have been? I don't, you know, no offense to, who who asked this question? Thomas. Thomas. Tom. Thomas. I, Tom. Tom. I don't want you to feel like I'm uh, uh, scolding you, Tom, because I'm not. Uh, but I, I would never want to be any other color than the one that I was. Uh, I'm also very happy that I'm the only person, actor, that got to play the Blue Ranger in all of MNPR. Like, I never shared the color with anybody uh, and so I just, I would never want to change the role that I was given. Uh, and uh, I look good in blue. You do. And so it's great. Go <laughs> on, go on. Shows up with beautiful eyes. I can't imagine that I would want to wear any other color than blue. I mean, again, I, uh, I originally auditioned for the Red Ranger uh, oh. for the role of Victor, which yeah. became Jason. Uh, but, you know, we didn't really even know what the colors were back then when we were auditioning. But um, so I think where I ended as Billy, the Blue Ranger, was uh, perfect. And I wouldn't change it, wouldn't want another color, I don't think, for the, for the life of me. Unless it was okay. unicorn to match your Zor. <laughs> <laughs> or a wolf. 
Oh, well, <laughs> well, the, well, well the, unicorn, right, right? the unicorn was still blue, just FYI. So, I mean, it's it like, you know. It was a blue unicorn. Well, that's not really mm -hmm. a unicorn, then. Mm -hmm. Well, a unicorn can How be any, any color. It can be any color. It's a rainbow. Just has it. No. This is, right. Hello, yeah. this is not Hello Kitty. This is not Hello Kitty. I was going to say Hello Kitty. <laughs> My Little Pony. My Little Pony. <laughs> My little pony. <laughs> So it's not negative Nancy negative, time. No, it's not. All right. <laughs> All right. Here's one of our channel members. Super chat. Raise them up high. Chris says, um, hi, everyone. David, did you have a favorite thing Billy invented? That's a good question. Uh, I mean, Billy invented so many cool things. Uh, I, I think, obviously, the communicator, number one, because uh, mm. that totally saved the Power Rangers on... Uh, I don't know how many levels, so that's cool. Uh, I think the funniest thing that Billy invented, uh, and we only saw it in a few episodes, was the rad bug. Uh, Billy had this uh, beetle, like a slug bug car, what I don't know what we call them, but um, anyways, and it flew, and uh, so that was really neat that Billy at 16 could invent a flying car, and nice. all it was, was like a smokestack. Uh, <laughs> On the car, and I, I still look at I still look at it and go, well, how does that make that car fly? It doesn't make any sense. But, uh, but Billy you know, in in the Power Ranger world, nothing Dude, makes I sense. I was going to say the same thing. We we are asked questions all the time. We're like, no clue. We just did what we needed to do because that's what it said in the writing. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Exactly. Yep. Mark Davies, Super Chad, raise my pie. Uh, David and Billy hold a special place in my heart. I was a nerdy kid growing up, and having Billy to look up to really helped me at times. Thank you, David. Aww. That's very nice of you. Thank you so much. I, I love hearing things like that. Hmm. Next question is from Strike Silver. Super Chad, raise him up high. Um, it is an, I'm going to read it on here, so I'm not looking over there. Yes. It is an honor to meet you, David Yost. The power has been kind to you, Kat and Nakia. Tell me, would you consider writing for any upcoming Power Ranger films? Right. Is that for you? That's for, for me. you. For you. Oh, uh, I would consider it, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. And there you have it, folks. <laughs> I know who well, 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 yeah. <laughs> Well, David, thank you so much, so thank much you. for being on the show with us. Thank you so much. It was such a wonderful well, thank you hour. Yeah, it's been, I can't believe it's been over an hour. Yeah. I know, it has. And I, I just thank you for being so accommodating and answering all of these questions. And we had, we're going to have to try to have you on the show another time, maybe when there's not a time crunch. <laughs> um, thank you so much, so yes. much. And uh, just another round of applause for the Diamond well, thank you both for being so accommodating with me as well. Obviously, I won't say anything. I'm not going to give anything away, but break a leg. And, uh, you. you know, knock, knock them dead. All that good stuff. But <laughs> certainly you. break a leg. And uh, I certainly appreciate you both. You both uh, amaze me with your beauty uh, and your kindness and your love. It's awesome. And uh, I'm honored to get to experience it. So thank you for having me on your show. It was so much fun. And I'd be happy to come back and Yay! finish answering these questions. Remember, he said uh, that, guys. <laughs> we haven't recorded. He said it. <laughs> Thank you, David. Have a good Thank one. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Aww. I feel a warm and fuzzy inside. Uh, your your, your um, Aussie crush when you were My Aussie Australia. crush. <laughs> So let's just give, let's uh, just say quick, the names. Quick shout out um, to Kenny Shibata, Austin, Austin. Malaski, Garrett Jackson, and S Nation. We're sorry we couldn't get to your questions, but thank you so much for your support. Um, I know that Austin did want to thank David for his support of the LGBT community, so I did want to say that. But um, thank you guys so much for tuning in, and he's, it was so wonderful. I even learned some things today. I know, I, I know. know. I didn't know about the unicorn. No. Um, yeah. There were some other things that he shared, and I was like, what? Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've, we've learned some things. We have. We have. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Mwah.